Evie, can you get this door, please? Alright, so today's video is going to be very different than my normal videos, but I think it's worthwhile and it's going to be interesting for you, I think. I'm going to explain where my food comes from. A lot of people today, they don't know where their food comes from. They're very disconnected, they're very uneducated, and I think that's a problem. Especially with all the problems in our food supply and flaws within our food system itself. All the chemicals, all the pesticides, all the shenanigans. A 70 minute wash with a solvent. So it starts here. I was out here, that's my house. I was out here talking to my neighbor recently. I was saying, hey man, you know, you raise cows, he raises cows out here. What do you think about me buying one of your cows at cost? Remember, I've got five kids, so we eat a lot of meat. I'm happy to butcher it myself, I told him. I'll just go out and shoot a cow in the head and butcher it. And he's like, yeah, fine. <laughs> I was surprised, I thought he was gonna say, oh, it's kind of weird, I don't know about that idea totally cool with it. I was talking to him about it and he said, well, why don't I send it to the feedlot and we'll grain feed it and then you can take it out of the feedlot. And I said, no, no, no. I want this thing grass fed. I want it wild. That's the whole point of me buying a cow. And this farmer says, well, what I do is I send them to the feedlot, but before they put hormone pellets into them, I have them removed and I have them butchered. And I said, why do you do that? And he said, well, because they taste weird once they put the hormone pellets into them. And it's just another example of how problematic our whole food supply is and how much shenanigans goes on when you don't understand where your food comes from. So today I'm going to explain how I butcher a cow and I'm getting it at cost. Actually, he gave me $600 off at cost. So this is literally what this guy is selling a cow for. So here's the cow. Hey buddy, how we doing? <clears throat> how we doing? My neighbor put him in the pen for me here, so he's not just running around all over the place. So if you're kind of squeamish, and that's fine, you don't have to watch this, but I'm just explaining to you what I'm gonna do here, and then I'm gonna get after it, I'm gonna get to it. So I'm gonna shoot this cow in the head with my muzzle loader, and then I'm gonna butcher it. And I'm not an expert at butchering, but you know, you don't have to be an expert. I want you to know how easy this is. Hey, Jerome. And the kids are gonna be involved, they homeschool. They're gonna be uh, watching every step of the way, which I think is very important. I think kids these days are very poorly educated within the public school system on where their meat comes from. And I think if you can't do this yourself, this is a good uh, experience in teaching kids, again, all these details. Watch out, Jerome. So anyways, um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put the cow down. I'm gonna lay down a tarp out here and then we're just gonna get right to it. We're gonna take the guts out of the cow. We're gonna save the liver and the heart. I'm actually gonna show you some video of a heart from a feedlot cow and how fatty it is and how unhealthy it is. And then I'm gonna show you this cow, this free range cow. I did not grain feed this cow at all. This is just completely wild off this huge pasture out here. No pesticides, no herbicides, I love it. So we're gonna take the liver, we're gonna take the heart and then we're just gonna, you know, start cutting meat and I'm gonna explain to you, you know, I mean, honestly, all you really need here in this process is a meat grinder, a vacuum sealer, and a chest freezer. If you've got those things, you're set to go. So the vacuum sealer is important because you're getting so much meat, you have to seal the air out of it to keep it fresh. But honestly, you can just start cutting meat off. You don't have to be an expert. You just cut meat, grind it up, turn it into hamburger, turn the whole thing into hamburger, except a couple of key portions. You know, I like to use the back legs for brisket and things, smoke it. The back straps are really good. So I'll show you what that looks like. And the tenderloins on the inside side of the back straps are really really good cuts for steaks like exceptionally good so you don't want to just grind that up into hamburger but the rest of it you can pretty much just grind up into hamburger so that's a little preview of what we're doing today keep in mind all animals die this is very ethical very natural it's very normal when they released uh wolves out into uh yellowstone 75 percent of the elk herd was killed off and Wolves, when they kill animals, they hamstring them, they bite them in the back legs till they fall down, they start eating them live, they start ripping out their liver and eating them while the animal's still alive. We're not doing anything like that. This is very natural, this is very healthy. I think the whole process is amazing for the kids to learn about. If you can't do this yourself, again, I understand, you might want your kids to see. YouTube's not gonna love it, but you might appreciate it, at least for the educational aspect. You don't wanna stick your head in the sand when it comes to learning where your food comes from, you wanna know. 
And this is a good place to start. Let's get after it, eh, Jerome? Mm -hmm. All right. So this is the powder, Anthony, black powder. All right, just a minute. Some gloves and some ear protection, like some headphones. 50 caliber bullet. Jack, you excited to see a cow get shot? Yeah! So, Alright, let's go shoot a cow. Ready, kids? Alright, let's let it stop twitching now. Everybody come away from it and be respectful until it's done twitching. Alright, let's go butcher a cow. Wow, what a beast. Wow! Look at this thing. It's okay, she's fine. It's not, it's a healthy cow. So the first thing you do on these is you just cut a line right down here and the guts will start to come out. You're gonna have to reach way in there and cut all the guts free, but it's kind of gross. That's just gutting animals. That's how it works. The most important thing is not to puncture the, uh, the gut lining, you know? Wow, what a big animal. Absolutely. It's good for Bailey. There comes the stomach. Whoa, that's huge. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, you wanna touch it? You got your gloves on, come touch it. Jack is a tough get character. Keeps coming. No oh, way. Daddy. No way. You can feel his liver back there. Wow. Yeah. Their hide is very tough. I'm very surprised. That is a tank of a stomach. I'll bet you really oh. your liver. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh no. It's going good. It's a little slower than I thought, but it's going good, huh? What do you guys think? Man, that's tricky as tough bugger. All right. Just a minute, buddy. This is the lungs right here. This big, giant, fluffy thing. Oh, look at this. Here's the heart. Look at that. Nice, healthy heart, huh? Let's get a bucket and put that heart in. We're going to grind that up, huh? Really? It's police? Oh, okay. Okay, it's all right. Did somebody call them in already? All right. There we go. That's a nice liver. That's big. Oh, yeah. Is that all you want these two buckets in? Where's the warden? Or is he coming or no? He drove past. He slowed down. The warden did? He didn't stop? No. <laughs> How did he not stop? <laughs> the sketchiest thing they've ever seen. <laughs> but we're, once we get it on the plastic, it'll be a lot easier. <laughs> wow, what a tank. Probably should have started this in the morning, but I had a lot of work. So thankfully we got the hide off. That's the most important thing here. I might be working in the headlamp tonight, so I'm not going to film that, but I've got a sled here lined with plastic. I'm going to take the back straps off and use those as stakes. Those are amazing stakes. There's tender lines on the inside. I'm going to use those as stakes. <laughs> so 
See the back strap here? <clears throat> Amazing stake. One of the best, best stakes on here, I think. Call a backstrap right there. Woo! Woo! Let's go ahead and hang up these back legs. Woo! It's a workout out here. Update. update on where we're at here. We've got all four of the legs hanging up. And I realized it's, it is really handy to have a meat hanger like this on a pulley system. I happen to have these from deer hunting, but so a meat grinder, freezer, chest freezer, freezer, freezer sealer, like a vacuum sealer, and then meat hangers. All right, let's trim some meat here and get some burger meat going. Tenderloins are actually on the inside of the rib cage. It's not lighting up too bad. I got the spine left. I've got the ribs cut off with a sawzall. And that's good for the night. I'm gonna bring that burger meat in. We're gonna grind that. And we'll keep cutting off more meat tomorrow. It's very cool. It's like 30 degrees. So it's a perfect temperature. Perfect time of year to do this. Forgot to mention I found the bullet here. This is the 50 caliber bullet I shot the cow with inside him. Pure copper, of course. I wouldn't shoot my cow with lead, but mushroomed pretty good. That's a heavy piece of heavy piece of metal. Pretty cool to find. Is that ribs? pretty good system here you fill up this jar and this is one pound you dump it into these bags you vacuum seal it and tons of dog food scraps we're gonna save money on dog food for like a year and I'll go downstairs and show you the freezer that's that is all one cow There's the dog food this is all burger meat here this thing. There's tons and tons of it. 
anybody who thinks monocrop farming is the way to go just hasn't spent a lot of time out in the Midwest where there's uh, just wastelands of empty fields and super low density of wildlife. At least when you raise cows, you eat one cow per year. And if you have a big family like I do, at least the cattle ranches have really good habitat for wildlife, you know? There's a lot of critters running around in those cattle ranches. Zero critters out on those monocrop wasteland farms, especially in the winter. All right, thanks for watching.